personal trainer wants to estimate the true average increase in chest circumference after a 12-week training program. If he wants to estimate the mean increase in circumference within a half inch using a 95% confidence interval, how many randomly chosen individuals will he need to measure? Assume the standard deviation is known to be 1.75 inches. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is identify the key phrases, as always, right? And here's that phrase that tells us what to do. It says, how many randomly chosen individuals will he need to measure? How many people will he need to measure? So that indicates a sample size problem. Now, we're looking that for a sample size to estimate what? To estimate the mean, correct? So at that point, we have information that indicates that we should be doing the formula that we have that involves n equals z alpha divided by 2 times the population standard deviation divided by e. And then we square all of that. Okay, so that's the sample size when you're formula when you're looking to estimate the mean. Now let's list the variables that we're going to need to fill in for this formula. We will need the standard deviation, we're going to need z alpha divided by 2, and we will need the margin of error. The easiest one to find is usually the population standard deviation, so let's go ahead and look for that. It says assume the standard deviation is known to be 1.75 inches. So it's clear that we know our population standard deviation. So I'll put 1.75 here. Now, the margin of error is the next easiest one to find, this guy, so let's try to find him next. It says, we want to estimate the mean increase in circumference within a half inch. All right, so this phrase, within, is usually the key phrase that they use when they're talking about margin of error. A lot of times they'll actually say the phrase margin of error, they'll say that for the margin of, to have the margin of error to be equal to, you know, such and such. But in this case, they're going to use the phrase within. So that's another way to state the margin of error, to say you want to estimate the mean within this number. Okay, so a half inch. Remember, this was given in inches, 1.75. So this will be, the error here will be given in inches, and a half inch is going to be listed as 0 0.5. You can use a fraction of one half as well, that's fine too. All right, and then finally, the last thing we need to calculate is this critical z value, the z alpha divided by 2 value that we need for the formula. All right, so we have to go by the confidence level to figure out that number. So if it says 95% confidence interval is what we want to create eventually, when we have the sample size, then at that point, we know that we're going to have to look up z alpha divided by 2 based on that confidence level. All right, so let's think about the steps. When you want to get z alpha divided by 2, the first thing you need to do is to know the confidence level. So we know the confidence level is 0.95. That leads to the idea that alpha is equal to 0 0.05 because confidence level and alpha must add up to 100%. So 0.95 or 95% plus 5% gives you 100, so that's alpha. And then if we're going to look this up on the t-table to get that extra decimal place of accuracy, we will do alpha divided by 2, and that'll give you half of 5%, which is going to be 2.5% or 0 0.025 if you divide 0.05 in half. Okay, so we want to look up this value, look up 0 0.025 on the t-table under infinity, right, infinity. And infinity is basically where the z-values are on the z-table. So we're going to look up 0 0.025 under the infinity row. Okay, so let's go to the table now, look up 0 0.025 to get our z alpha divided by 2 value. Okay, so we're looking for the critical z value that corresponds to a 95% confidence level. Let's identify the alpha value we need to look up. Alpha is 5%. On this table, we need to look up half of that number. So instead of 5%, we'll be looking up 2.5%. Let's isolate that column first. So there it is, that's isolated. And the next step we're gonna do is to move the table down to the last row where we'll find the Z values. Okay, so scrolling this up. Okay, so right there down at the bottom, we see that the number next to our isolated column is 1.960. And that's the desired critical Z value that we need, 1.960. Okay, so we see that the z alpha divided by 2 value turns out to be 1.960. And then with those numbers that we've collected, we're going to plug them into our formula above. Okay, so the z alpha divided by 2 number is 1.960. The next number we need is a standard deviation. It says that's 1.75. Then we need to finally divide by the error. The error is 0.5. Square that 
and that'll give you your final answer. Okay, so let's do the arithmetic here on the calculator. So we end up with 1.96 times 1.75 divided by 0.5, and we're done, we get 6.86, but this is before we square. So 6.86, and then we're supposed to square that. So let's square that, and we'll get something like 47.0596. Remember that even though this would normally round to 47, we're gonna call it 48 because we're looking for the number of people that we would have to survey and or measure here in this case, and we can't measure a fraction of a human being. So we're going to have to sample 48 people to make sure that we have this quality level that's been specified. Um, this is a little better than 47. 47.05 is the minimum number of people the formula is telling us. We're going to go up to 48, so we'll actually have a teeny bit more quality than we promised, right? All right, but either way, that's our sample size number then, 48.